Hi weaving friends. Last week's video was all about how to avoid back pain at the floor loom and a lot of you asked me about doing a similar video for the rigid heddle loom and so that's what we're going to talk about today. Before I launch in, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video with anyone you think might be interested in it. That really helps me to spread the word about what I'm doing. I also wanted to let you know that next week the Diamond Stripe Towel Weave Along opens. This is going to be running over at my online weaving school. I'm going to leave a link down below that has a page with a ton of information about the Weave Along, what you can expect and whether it's going to be suitable for you to join in with. Anyone is welcome to join, so make sure you check out that page for more information that opens on Tuesday next week. And I also wanted to quickly mention that next month, the February round of Weaving Bootcamp will open. This only opens twice a year at this stage, February and September. So if you are interested in Bootcamp, I will also leave a link to that down below. Okay, so let's get into today's topic. First of all, I'm going to be going over weaving with a stand and then afterwards I'll be going over what options you have for if you have a rigid heddle loom but you don't have a stand. Now this is my 24 inch rigid heddle loom and I actually purchased the stand with it when I bought the loom years and years ago and I think that for anything this size and above a stand is a really really good investment and I really encourage you to get one. I wouldn't buy a stand for say my little sample at loom which is like a 10 inch loom that I use for samples and small projects. I don't think it's worth having a stand for that. I'll use a table for that or I'll prop it up against something or I'll use it on my lap while I'm sitting in the recliner. It's very convenient and portable. But something like this, you're going to have to think a little bit more about how you're going to use it to avoid any strain on your back and your shoulders and your neck. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is my chair that I'm actually sitting in right now. I have mentioned this chair on several occasions and I do have a video that talks about why a stand is a good thing. I'll link to that video down below if you haven't seen it before. But I will go over again today why I like this chair so much and how it has helped me avoid a lot of back pain at the rigid heddle loom. So this is actually an office chair. It's on wheels and it has several adjustments that can be made. So down the side here I've got some levers. Just push this out of the way for the moment. And the, the levers, there are three levers, they all have different functions. So the first lever takes the chair up or down. Um, the second lever tilts the chair. You can tilt it forward or tilt it back. And the third lever is for the backrest. So you can tilt the backrest right in or you can tilt it out. So similar to what I was talking about in the last video, I was talking about my piano bench, but the point about the piano bench at the loom was that it was height adjustable. Any chair that is adjustable in any way is going to be more beneficial than just a straight back chair. Now I should also say, like I did in the last video, that I'm not a medical professional. I'm only talking about my own experiences. So some of you, maybe you use a hard back chair that's very straight and that works perfectly for you. You find that it's comfortable and you avoid any kind of pain in that chair. If that's the case for you, then there's no need for you to change. But this is what has worked really well for me. I know that I started off with a hard backed dining room chair and it was not good for my back. It wasn't suitable. It didn't give me any support and it wasn't comfortable. Okay, so this chair is really padded. Also the seat, if I stand up, you probably won't be able to see, but the seat is kind of molded around. So you sit right in the middle and it's contoured. So it, when you, it's contoured to a, a body shape. So no matter what your type of body shape, you, you have the seat, you have the two legs and it's sort of contoured to that shape. So it's super comfortable. As I said, it's an office chair and we were fortunate enough to get this as a freebie from my husband's workplace many years ago. And because it's such good quality, it's absolutely fine. There's no wear and tear on it at all. The other thing that I really like about this chair is that it's on wheels. 
so when I'm weaving at the loom and the loom is on the stand I can really easily adjust myself in and out of different positions it's very easy to stand up because I can just do this sit down again and push myself back in very easily the height adjustment is something that I use a lot and I'm going to talk now about what a correct height would be for me to be sitting at this loom okay so one thing that I really love about weaving at a rigid heddle loom on a stand is that you can get so close to the loom you can get right inside it and if you have a height adjustable chair that really ensures that you are getting inside it so let's say I put my chair up to the highest height that it'll go and I try and get in under my loom okay so as soon as I'm coming in my knees are hitting the bar at the front and I can't get any further than this that means that when I'm weaving now you're just gonna have to pretend that I've got a warp on here I'm gonna have an invisible warp today but when I'm weaving I'm stretching out my arms and I'm sort of I can sit straight but it's it's kind of robotic and stiff um, I'm not close enough to the work so if I adjust the chair down okay just adjust it not all the way down but part of the way down and then try again and I can pull the loom to me as well this is perfect so what's happening is the tops of my thighs are just touching that bar that goes across the bottom at the front that stabilizing bar and the front beam is tucked right up against me and I can also as an extra kind of stability thing I'm not sure if you can see this but um, there's a stabilizing bar running across the floor of the stand as well and I can rest my feet on that um, I think we'll get another angle of this in a moment so you can see the whole thing but then when I sit back my elbows once again my elbows can rest on top of the front beam I can sit back in my chair and I've got that beautiful back support I've also got lumbar support down here because of the way this backrest is contoured and I'm sitting right back in my chair I'm so comfortable right now like I can just I could just stay here for ages <laughs> just sitting so comfortable so that when I start weaving on my invisible warp again see I'm so much closer to the loom now that I'm, I don't have to like straighten my arm right out and sort of reach all I have to do is just this natural movement of passing the shuttle back and forth and it's so gentle on my arms that I'm not going to have that stress on my shoulders and my neck and my back that I would when I was too far away from the loom so just about here is about perfect let's see what happens if I put the seat down as low as it goes okay so now um, the tops of my thighs aren't touching that stabilizing bar at all I can actually pull the loom in a little bit closer to me when my when I'm seated down further um, my elbows are still resting but I'm sort of angling up to get them there because now I'm sitting down just a little bit too low so I would want I'd want to put my elbows out and just have them resting naturally rather than angling up so this is just a little bit too low when I start weaving it's going I'm going to be angling my arms up my hands up a little bit a little bit too much it's going to put stress on my shoulders so I know that that is not quite right that I need that little extra bit of height a little bit more than that too and pull it in and then I'm happy again so putting my elbows there they're resting see how straight I can sit when my elbows are resting there everything's just good remember about keeping your straight back but you want your your back to be straight in a way that feels natural not in a way that feels forced and robotic and rigid also when I'm positioned correctly 
within the loom like it's nice and close to me it's really easy for me to access the breaks I don't have to like bend forward and stretch to in order to advance my warp I can just reach out and very easily advance my warp here and here and it's all within very easy reach of me I can tighten anything that needs to be tightened without having to stretch or do anything else um, and then I've also got my little shelves on the side for resting my shuttles in between when I don't need it and that's really handy as well that's all within reach as well um, just a point to make is the the new Ashford stands I believe they do not have these shelves I'm a bit disappointed about that because I really wouldn't want to be without these little shelves and I often wish that they were a little bit larger so that I could have more space to kind of store things so to go over those main points just quickly again my back is straight and well supported my elbows can rest easily on top of the front beam I'm tucked into the loom I don't have to straighten out my arms in order to pass the shuttle and my feet are resting either on the floor in front or behind the stabilizing beam on the bottom of the stand or for real good stability they can rest on the stabilizing beam okay so same chair as before but this time I'm sitting at a desk now rigid heddle looms most of them will have some sort of cutout or curve here at the end and that is so that you can rest it against a table so the way that I've got it at the moment theoretically I could rest it right here and be weaving that way but then when I'm trying to beat let's see um, and you want that sort of resistance it's probably going to slip a little bit and I personally would find that annoying so I like to get back a little bit from whatever I'm resting it against and I like to use that cutout to put it on the edge of the table and I still like to get in close to the loom now I feel like I'm up a little bit high at the moment because my feet aren't resting comfortably on the ground so I'm just going to go down a little and then I can still get in close to the loom and be resting comfortably against the back of the chair and then I can be weaving with everything in within reach and all of that just as I did before with the stand um, except this time of course I'm using my body to tension it and sort of keep it in place okay so essentially I'm wedging the loom between the table and myself and that is just that's a fine way to weave as I said it's all here it's it's all easy but I do really love my stand and of course because I'm filming on my loom a lot of the time the stand makes it so much easier because I can be sort of hands-free and I don't have to worry about holding things in certain places I can walk away from the loom very easily and all of that so it's still up to you whether you want to make the investment in the stand or not but it's a really good thing so this is the other way to use your loom now when you advance your warp you may need to get back from the loom a little bit so that you've got room to roll that bar um, so you're not pressed up against it but otherwise you're getting in nice and close so you might want to sort of move your chair in and then adjust it and it's going to be up to you to what part of your body it's going to be most comfortable resting on um, for some it might be up a little bit higher and for some it might be a little bit lower and for others it might be kind of in the middle I'd probably be resting it right here it's right where my belly button is actually and um, I guess it's where I've got like a natural fold in my body anyway so it just seems to fit there really nicely 
and I would be quite comfortable doing that. So with my smaller samplet loom, I will sometimes weave like this at a table, always keeping a comfortable chair. Um, or as I said, I'll weave with it on my lap or something like that. It's, it's much more flexible for a larger loom, especially if you're going bigger than a 24 inch. If you've got a 32 or you've got a 40, whatever it is, 48. Is it really going as big as 48 or am I dreaming? I think there might be a 48 that Ashford has. Um, anyway, that's a huge loom. You definitely would want a stand for that because even this is like a, I guess a student desk size. This loom takes up most of the width of this desk. Um, and also if you had a, a much wider loom, you'd be wanting to move a little bit while you're weaving and that would be ever so much easier to do with it on a stand. Um, another thing that a stand does for you is you can have a dedicated setup space for your weaving so you don't have to always be putting the loom somewhere on a table or whatever taking up space. Um, you can have a dedicated space for it and that's also a really good thing for your weaving because it's always set up and ready for you when you want to weave. Okay friends well I hope this video was helpful to you and until next time happy weaving!